Uh, the next presenter is going to be uh, Thomas Bosen from Epitherapeutics. Uh, so he's an organic synthetic, uh, synthetic and medical medic, medicine chemist. Uh, he holds a master's degree also in management of technology. Um, he's got his PhD in bioorganic uh, chemistry from University of Copenhagen and uh, did part of his uh, research in Cambridge uh, under Stuart Warren's um, supervisory. Um, prior, to his uh, prior to joining Epitherapeutics uh, in October 2010, he was quite successful in uh, other Danish biotech uh, setting ups, such as Action Pharma, uh, who actually just uh, sold not so long ago $410,000 uh, uh, some of uh, their patents to Abbott. Uh, and also is serving as a founder manager of uh, Sierra Matcam. And now he's currently the director of uh, discovery at Epitherapeutics. Thank you for inviting me to give this uh, talk. Um, now I think we switch perspective now towards the end user. Um, as you notice from the introduction, I have absolutely no background in the technical programming of the databases or working with databases as such. Uh, I merely got into this because this is a necessity uh, for doing a discovery process these days and uh, being in a small uh, startup, uh, then uh, you need to, uh, somebody need to do it and uh, I came around and I worked with this. So um, my agenda for today is that I will just give you a small introduction so you know where I come from, what our company, are, uh, our company is and then I will uh, try to explain how we have set up uh, IGC as an integrated tool in uh, our discovery process. It's a very important tool for us. And uh, then uh, I've put a, a final point there is a further development and that's from the, our perspective. I've seen today that uh, there are much of this that is already covered by, by the software but we haven't implemented it yet. So it's something for us to look at. Um, so, um, so uh, Epitherapeutics is a fairly new company. It was founded in 2008 uh, as a virtual company and got into a real setup uh, like two years ago. We are now 17 employees in Copenhagen. We work with uh, uh, CROs uh, all over the world, uh, but we have a, a larger group in Canada where we have uh, eight chemists. We have uh, international investors um, and I think we think quite good ones. Uh, we work in the, the area field of uh, epigenetics, which I'll go more into now. Uh, and we have some uh, progressed uh, programs where we see some good uh, activity of our compounds. Um, and also uh, we have a strong collaboration with uh, Abbott. Uh, that will be Abbey, I guess. Uh, uh, and that was signed uh, in December and has been in, in operation just over one and a half year now. Um, and as we are a venture-backed uh, company, we are uh, always preparing for, to find for the next uh, money. So um, epitherapeutics uh, within the world of uh, epigenetics, as I said. Uh, epigenetics is an area that you might be familiar with, but uh, it's a, um, or you may not, uh, it's, um, it's, it's something that regulates the transcription of, of genes in different cells. So, so there are different types of uh, uh, things that can happen. You can uh, methylate your DNA uh, uh, nucleotides uh, or you can, uh, in the cells where the DNA is wrapped around some protein called histones, uh, you can, in, on these histones you can have uh, acetylation or you can have methylation and you can also have the opposite uh, deacetylation or demethylation. In epitherapeutics we are focused on uh, the lower part which is uh, the, the uh, enzymes that uh, puts on uh, methyl groups on the amino acid called lysines or uh, remove the uh, methyl groups again. So why is this important? Um, it's important because um, some of these uh, enzymes uh, is shown to be uh, amplified in certain uh, um, uh, uh, cancer-related cell lines um, or human cell lines isolated from, uh, for instance, a carcinoma. Uh, uh, and, um, and what happens is that the, you, have the, you can measure that you actually have an uh, excess of demethylation. You have a, a, a activation of some receptors called a, 
androgens, and that will lead to uh, genomic instability of these cells, expression of uh, oncogenes, and overriding senescence, which means that people uh, get cancer. So our idea is to, to, uh, to start uh, to develop some small molecules that can inhibit these enzymes uh, and uh, eventually uh, be used for the treatment of cancer. Uh, so this is a novel and, and, and growing area um, that has uh, uh, that's more, much attention uh, attracted most attention over the last couple of years. So uh, we have um, some uh, very early uh, discovery programs uh, on different uh, dimethylases. We have a, um, uh, the uh, uh, collaboration with Abbott, which I can't say anything about. And then we have uh, a, uh, a project on a, a, a methyl transferase where we um, are collaborating with the Kuhlman University, different small uh, biotech companies in Denmark, and which is uh, uh, supported by the uh, uh, Danish uh, 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 High Technology Fund, which is High Technology Foundation. Oh, um, so how do we use IJC in our discovery process? So first of all, uh, I think uh, SAR has been mentioned uh, more times today, but just want to try to define it for, the, uh, for those in the audience that are not familiar with it. Abbreviation. Uh, what we do is that we um, design compounds. Uh, that's the medicinal chemist here at the top, um, and then we have the compounds made, um, and uh, and then we uh, test it in our uh, bio biological assays, uh, and then we get the information back. Uh, the uh, really, oh sorry, uh, the relation between the structure and the activity, and then we use that for designing new compounds. Uh, together with all other types of information we get in, but that's uh, crucial, and and that's what we're using the database for. So how are we organized? We are a, as you saw, a small team. So we are doing our product management and product leadership inside. Uh, uh, so, and then we try to work together with um, external uh, collaborators. Uh, that's CROs. Um, the major one is our chemistry CRO. We also work with um, CROs in, in ADMA and PK, and as you can see, it's, uh, uh, it's all over the world, from Canada to China. Uh, we are in Poland, and, and we have worked in, in the UK as well. Um, so we get all sorts of uh, data from different uh, uh, organizations and in different formats, um, and we also generate a lot of data in-house in our own labor laboratories where we uh, are doing the uh, actual screening, we're doing the uh, cell biology, the, for, for, uh, the target validation, um, and all this we want to capture so we can actually do the uh, uh, structure activity uh, relation, uh, have the structure activity relationship and have this information quickly to, to, to the uh, project uh, management team. Um, and also we get, uh, we buy compounds from outside uh, and we get uh, uh, compound information that way. So, so um, when we uh, just over it's, uh, one and a half years set out to set up this uh, database, we had all kinds of uh, spreadsheets and Word documents and so on, uh, and that didn't work for us. Uh, we, we suddenly grew and we couldn't uh, capture all this in information. So, uh, so how should we go around to do that? So. So we had to set, uh, we sat down and discussed some uh, specifications. So being a small um, uh, startup, uh, the idea is to generate some money to the investors. Uh, that means that we soon should be taken over by somebody else uh, and they should buy our projects and progress that further into the clinic and so on. Which means that we uh, should prepare for that. So we should have a, um, a system that is uh, scalable uh, and we should have something, something that's incompatible with what everybody else is doing. So, and we have the problem that we do not have the expertise in-house. We cannot afford to, to have people only f uh, uh, working with the with database. We need to, to do more things and focus on the science. Uh, so it should be easy to use and it should also be easy to access for users with different backgrounds. So we have chemists, biologists, uh, 
and people that are, have some uh, interest in the programming on computer and some uh, that doesn't. Um, and then uh, we were, last year we were six people, now we are 17 and we were running this type of assays, now we run something else. Um, so we should also be uh, versatile and, and try to cover everything uh, we are doing. So what we did was that we set up the uh, MySQL database and then we chose um, Instant JCAM as our end user interface. And at that time we were collaborating with the Evotech, so that was somewhat in influenced from that, I must say. Um, so, uh, but we have been really happy with the, uh, with the choice. So what did we do? Yes, we, um, we said what's important here, we should be able to trace everything. So, uh, so we, the program setup should be the way that we are integrated with our data management setup so, so we can actually uh, go back to the actual uh, compound we are synthesizing or the actual experiment. Uh, if we are in a due diligence process or something like that, we should be able to answer questions quickly. Um, we have, as I said, different types of data and different a variety of uh, assays and uh, experiments we want to cover in the database. And also, um, because we might not want to sell everything to the same uh, big farmer, uh, we might want to sell something to that company and to another company and keep collaborating. So there should be a user level and a project level uh, security interface. And then um, how do you c collect all data together? Uh, the way we have decided to, to do it is uh, to use our compound number as our primary key. So that is the one that goes uh, through all, all data so you can actually uh, uh, search. And that tool is set up then to, to, uh, to enable uh, the uh, <coughs> SAR work uh, in an easy and, uh, and, and uh, fast way. So we have made some basic tables. We have a structure table, a batch table. Structure is, uh, as you've seen it now, a unique table with a, for a unique structure for each EPT number. We have a batch number which also cover, covers a, a salt code. So you can actually see from the batch number what type of salt we have. We have the project where we assign a, access for the different uh, people, uh, people and then we have the two important uh, tables are the uh, primary assays as we call it which is a single point screening, single dose screening if you have uh, like a, a big screen at, at 30 micromole or something like that then you have one value that you could get into that or you have the other, diff the other type where you have the secondary assays where you have a dose response where you actually get an IC50 and so on and then with the help of uh, Tim, is then uh, piloted into a, a SAR table that can actually display um, uh, all the assays and relate that to, to the actual compound. So just to show you, maybe I lost the connection here, but maybe you can see this. This is a, a screen dump. I can think you can look at your own uh, version, but uh, this is a screen dump of, of our batch table just to show you what type of information we can have here. I've excluded the structure, which we also have in here, but we have uh, then our, our number system, our batch number, but you can see we have here you have a salt uh, and a batch, and here you have uh, uh, somewhere down there there's an 002, which is the second, the second batch is here, and then we have a molecular weight, we have uh, the notebooks book page from our um, uh, CRO. Uh, we have, uh, we know who the, who the CRO is. We have, uh, if the CRO have their own registration system, they will have a supplier ID. Um, and then we have some data uh, regarding how much we got and how it looked like when we received it and things like that. So, so it's easily and tra uh, traceable. So, uh, and here we have, um, when we run assays, uh, uh, every single uh, scientist upload data from a CSV file. Um, we generate actually uh, uh, the, the curves is generated in a graph path uh, and is, this is a PNG file that we link to uh, from this form. So it links to our, our server. Um, and, um, and this is a script generated from, from the data we have here where we have the experiment, uh, experimental ID we have the, the compound and the batch. Uh, 
and then you can actually see the curve as you scroll down for, for each compound, which means that we can actually sit here and uh, then QC uh, our curves. And if we find that the, that the data is not uh, uh, valid, then we can invali uh, invalidate the data here without deleting it. We still keep it, but, but we have the invalidated data, which doesn't go into our uh, SAR table. Um, and as you can see here, we're working on different targets and divided by targets and so on. Then you can actually uh, scroll down this table and see what goes on. And that, that's uploaded, uh, and then we can access it immediately uh, as, as chemists. What's also valuable is, is uh, this, uh, which is uh, our SAR table here. Again, you can see the structure. You cannot because it's been removed. Uh, but, um, and then you have the, our EPT number as the primary key. And then you, you can walk down, and now these data are not so good, but uh, further down they have better data. Um, so, so you have, <laughs> so you have uh, different types of uh, assays here. So we have uh, alpha lysa assays, our enzymatic assays. We have some um, redox assays, FRAP and resistruin assays. We have some cellular data. Uh, different types of uh, immune fluorescence and, and um, tox data in here. So, and we can just add columns to this uh, so we can actually uh, cover all, all types of uh, assays and we can remove what's not uh, relevant anymore, uh, so which is quite nice. So in this uh, summary table here, we have what's uh, current and relevant for the chemists so they can um, this, this uh, SAR table is refreshed twice a day, so, so within you know, hours from the result has been uploaded from, uh, from the biologist, uh, our chemist in uh, USA can, can look at the data, and, uh, and sometimes we have uh, a very quick uh, turnaround in the way that we have a compound sent from Canada on Tuesday, arrived Thursday in Copenhagen, tested, uploaded uh, on the Friday, and then they can look at the data and we can decide what to do next uh, and we can order chemicals and sometimes it's uh, the next iteration is that they, they're shipping the following Tuesday. So that's, that's quite fast and, and, and it's only possible because we have uh, this tool uh, as integrated in our process. So, <clears throat> as I said, uh, it's easy to use for the scientists. Uh, uh, and is easily accessed by the scientists. The problem is that uh, on the administrator level still, it requires um, some, uh, the way we have set it up is uh, requires some programming and that is uh, time consuming and it's complex, it's too complex for me, so I buy uh, time at Kim Axon uh, to have this done. Um, and that means that sometimes we also see, because it's so complex, we see some problems in our performance. <laughs> But I think that's something that can be overcome. Uh, but, but for us, it certainly has been almost an uh, out-of-the-box uh, program and, and usable in a small uh, organization. So what are to do, do next? What we would like to do, uh, because we do that all the time, we need to report to our board. We need to report to uh, external uh, uh, people are visiting, maybe because they want to invest, maybe they want to co collaborate and so on. So it, should, it's, it would be nice if we could generate uh, graphs and, and, and have a correlation in data where we can have some built-in graphs that ac actually could do the calculation for us and so on. Um, so we could present this in, in a nice way. And, um, and, and also the exporting options uh, from, from our database is something that we need to look more into. Now we are uh, copying and pasting and that is also quite time consuming. There might be better ways to, to do that that we haven't uh, discovered yet. So um, I don't know if I have used all my time, but uh, I think that was uh, what I wanted to say. So thank you for your attention.